I'm Diana Krause. And I'm Allison Rosenberg. And we're with the Greater Columbia Obedience Club. We're here today to show you some of the roles that you will be participating in when you come help at our agility trial. I just, we set up the field to look like an agility trial, just to help you out with the visualization. Usually the people who are keeping score and timing the runs sit right here in this chair. So you won't have to do that job, but I just want you to know that that's what there'll be. Um, there'll be chairs set up around the ring. There's a white chair over there. There's another chair in the far corner over there. And that's where the ring crew sits in these chairs that are around the ring. And we will talk more about that later. The first job we're going to talk about is called leash runner. It's called leash runner, but don't run in the ring. Okay. So leash runner's job is to take the participants leash from the start line to the finish line so that they can hook up their dog as soon as they get to the finish line. So you'll just be standing near the start line. You can stand near these people here if you want to, but you're just going to stay in place as the competitor take, takes their leash off. Some competitors will hand you the leash. Some will just throw it on the ground. You just wait for them to throw their leash. And if it gets near you, you can pick it up. But I would like you to wait for the competitor to leave the line before you pick up the leash and walk with it. ring crew and there's usually at least three ring crew that sits around various parts of the ring. One of the people who do ring crew will have to be the shoot setter. This right here is the shoot. It's a short shoot and what the, the shoot setter does is just comes out and resets the shoot so it lies flat like that. Um, if it gets twisted and you don't reset it, the next dog that comes out can get twisted in the ring. They start to freak out and it gets all twisted up and the dog gets scared. So we don't want that to happen. So we need somebody to come out every time the dog goes through and reset the chute. So you'll be sitting in a chair like this. After the dog goes through the chute. Ready? Ready? Shoot! Go! You're just going to come out here as long as the dog's away. Reset the shoe so it lies flat, and then you go sit back in your chair again. Okay, another job for ring crew is you will have to come out into the ring and set bars. The um, ring crew's job is to set the jump height for the jumps. On the sides of the jumps, you'll see the numbers that tell you what the jump heights are. When it's time to change jump heights, you'll hear somebody call out, um, up to 12 or down to 16 that just means they want the bar set for 12 or they want the bar set for 16. These jump cups usually there's only one jump cup on a jump every once in a while you might have two bars but most um, jumps only have one so to pull these up you just press on them and they'll pull out they have a little round clip on them that just goes into the hole so if it says 12 inch you put it into the 12 inch hole and it drops down now it looks like it's actually slept below 12 inch, but once the bar is set on it, the bar is actually what hits the 12 inch mark. Make sure that when you set the bars, that you don't wedge them. Because if they're wedged in really tight, and you might think that you're helping the dog, preventing them from dropping a bar, but actually what can happen if it's wedged in there, if the dog hits it, say the dog takes off poorly, and they hit the jump with their chest, if the bar doesn't displace, it, they're going to hit on it and then the dog's going to crash and fall on its head. So we want the bars to displace if the dog hits them. So just make sure, you might have to move the jump just a little bit, just make sure there's a little bit of a gap in there so that the bar can be displaced. You don't want a huge gap, you don't want it so it's barely touching there. So just, you know, just a little bit so that the bar is on there but it's not wedged. If you're on course and a dog drops a bar, at the end of the run you want to go reset the bar. Sometimes dogs go through jumps on the course twice, so you have to be aware if a dog's going to come back over that jump, you don't want to reset it. 
So it's usually good to wait till the dog's done or almost done with their run and they're far away from you and then you can go out and reset the jump. Right, this is another type of jump that you'll see on course. It's called the triple. There's three bars on the triple and you just set it for whatever height is called out. So if they say eight inch dogs are running, reset the bars. You'll see it where it says eight there, eight there, and eight here. So that's all you do is you set the bars at the eight inch jump height. And that's all you have to do. And it's ready to go. There's three bars. It's called the double. And it actually has four bars. Um, it's called a double because it is double bars right here. So it's set right now for eight inch dog and it works just like the triple. The jump bars are marked. So if it says a 12 inch dog, then you set it for the 12 inch mark. But it is a double, so it has two bars, but for the dog's visual cues, we um, have a crossbar so that it just helps the dog know that it's a deeper jump than a, just a single bar jump. So there's a cross piece on the double. And usually if, you, if the height is set for 12, then these go eight on an eight inch cup sideways to the ground, eight inch cup sideways to the ground. So it's, these are one jump height lower than what these are. Jump heights are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and 24. <laughs> this is the table. The table only has three jump heights. So the four eights and twelves jump one height, the sixteens and the twenty jump another height, and the uh, twenty-four inch dogs jump the highest jump height. Right now the table is set for the sixteen and the twenty inch dogs. So if we were going down in jump height and they said set it for twelve inch dogs, then all you do is you lift the table up. Usually the legs are kept somewhere close to where the table is, but usually on the side of the ring. You unscrew the leg, pull it off, and you just put the new leg in. And then you just screw it tight again. Just don't hit your head. Some people do the bottom bars first, and then when they come up, they hit their head. So just be careful you don't hit your head on the bars. And it's okay if you're at the trial and you can't remember something. All you have to do is um, ask the judge. Just say, you know what, I can't remember how to set this. Can you help me? And she will help you or somebody else will come in and help you. And then you just pick up the bars. You put the table down, hopefully where it was set before. And then you just pick up the bars and put them back on the side where, you, where we're storing them. And then the table's ready to go. I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, what type of clothes to wear when you come to the trial. It's not on grass. Our trial's in a horse arena. It is undercover, so if it rains, you'll, you'll be able to stay dry, but it's on red clay dirt. So don't wear like your brand new tennis shoes because they get stained red and it can be hard to get that out. And don't wear your best nice clothes. Wear something more casual that if in case of a dog jumps up on you that and they get their red paws on you that you're not all upset that they just wrecked your brand new t-shirt that you When bought. you're ring crowing and sitting in the chair, sometimes dogs can be distracted during their run and they'll be doing their run and all of a sudden they notice you sitting there and they're gonna come up and wanna say hi. Don't pet the dog, just kinda of try to ignore the dog, look the other way while the dog's trying to sniff you. Just don't show the dog any attention and eventually it'll go back to its owner and continue its run. Um, when you come to the trial, just remember your dog etiquette. When you, If you see somebody's dog that you maybe you wanna pet or you're interested in that person's dog, make sure you always go up and ask them, is it okay if I pet your dog? Most of the dogs there are very friendly, but sometimes some people's dogs aren't as friendly as others. So you need to always ask to make sure that they're that it's okay with them that you pet their dog. Um, feel free to come up and ask me any questions while we're there. You know, I, if you can't remember something or you're tired of doing the job that we gave you, maybe they made you do leash runner twice and you don't want to do that anymore. That's okay. Just come up and say, hey, can I do a different job? Um, there are other jobs. There's scribe runner where. I told you that the people are going to be sitting in these chairs scribing the person's run and afterwards they hand the sheet that they just wrote about the dog to the person behind them which is scribe runner. They, they'll get about five sheets and then they'll take it over to the score table and that person logs the information into the computer. So that's another job you might have. Just feel free to come up and ask any questions. We also 
have um, snacks and drinks for anybody who comes and works at the trial and it's usually over at the um, brick building and you'll see where it is you'll see stuff in the window and people are going over there and you can go over there and help yourself to a drink or some snacks while you're working at the trial we appreciate you guys coming and feel free to ask me any questions when you get there or if you have any concerns just you can email me or ask Nicole thank you